If you want this to be something that's part of your legacy that long after you're off this earth is still here, well then write it today. Or, I mean, if you truly believe that this is one of the best things that you can do to grow your brand, your influence, your business, well then there's no point in waiting. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? <laughs> no way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. I honestly cannot believe that it has been over a year since I announced to the world that I wrote a book. And it's even wilder to think about the fact that I started writing that book long before I ever whispered the news out loud. Now, maybe writing a book is a goal that you've held close to your heart for many years. Not sure if you have the time or the energy or the skill to make it happen. Or maybe you're like me and you swore up and down that you would never write a book, but you're beginning to feel more open to that idea and what it could do for your life or your business. If either scenario sounds like you, well, this is your episode. Chandler Bolt is the CEO of selfpublishing.com and the author of seven best-selling books, including his most recent book titled Published. Through his books, podcasts, YouTube channels, and self-publishing school, he's helped thousands of people write a book that grows their income, their impact, and their business. He's on the Gold Digger podcast to dig into the world of writing and self-publishing a book from narrowing down an idea to the strategies to write a great book in a short amount of time and how to promote that book, even if you're not showing up with a massive built-in audience of potential readers. Now, real quick before we get started, Chandler is hosting a free training all about how to write and self-publish a book. During this training, he's going to dig even deeper into the topics and the strategies that we cover in this conversation on the podcast. So if writing a book is on your list of things to do, you do not want to miss this opportunity to learn from Chandler. Whenever you can safely do so, hop onto Instagram and DM me the word author. That's it. All you have to do is just jump onto Instagram at Jenna Kutcher, send me a DM with the word author in it, and I will send you all the info so that you can grab a seat to Chandler's free training all about writing and self-publishing a book. I'll also include a link to sign up for the training in the show notes for you so you can sign up however you want to. But really, if you just DM me the word author, I'll shoot you all the info you need to get registered. Now, let's dive on in with Chandler Bolt. One of the best things about hosting the Gold Digger podcast is getting to chat with people who are experts in areas that I'm not, like the area of product-based businesses. I got to host a conversation with Jacqueline Snyder and Mina Kunlo-Sitep from the Product Boss Podcast last year, and now I am so excited because they have joined me on the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. Take your physical product sales and strategy to the next level to create your dream life with a workshop-style strategy hour of social media and marketing strategies so that you can up-level as the boss of your business. If you love Gold Digger, I know you'll love the product boss. So tune in wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, Chandler. Welcome to the Gold Digger podcast. Jenna, it's so great to be here. I am so excited because we connected literally a year ago. I had announced my book and you were like, Hey, I know that there are going to be so many people in your audience who are going to say, how did you do this? I want to do this. Let me just send you something in the mail. And I literally remember being in Arizona and getting this box from you that was filled with incredible information for authors. And so I first just want to hear a little bit about your background and how you got into this world of self-publishing. Yeah, I'm I'm glad the box made it to you. That's the surprise magic box. (laughs) And uh, yeah, so I, you know, my background is a little bit unconventional in this in the sense that you know I'm a C level English student and a college dropout uh, with ADHD who ended up writing books, (laughs) which was the last thing that I thought that I would ever do. But I got into it because you know the first book was all about things my parents taught me growing up that I thought were normal, and then got out in the real world and realized no one gets taught this stuff. And it was kind of, you know, I wrote it with my brother, who's a Grammy nominated rock and roll musician. And so it was his perspective as a musician on these 15 things, my perspective as a business guy. 
And then that just kind of, that book did well. People started asking, hey, how are you doing this? Then we started helping people publish and that led to self-publishing school and then ultimately self-publishing.com. And we've published about 7,000 books in the last eight years. (laughs) We live, breathe and sleep this stuff. That's incredible. And you know, it's really interesting. When I went through the whole process a little over a year ago, I announced that I wrote my book. I got so many questions from people. And one of the biggest questions that I got asked is, why are you doing this? Why should an (laughs) entrepreneur or a side hustler or anyone listening to this podcast write a book? And I know why I did it, but I want to hear, why do you think anyone that's listening to this podcast should write a book if they've never considered it? Yeah. I mean, it's so funny. I think I literally asked you that when you came to the podcast. (laughs) It's like, is this a business play? Is this a personal brand play? I mean, I think it's different. It's, it's different for everyone. I mean, some people it's, hey, this is the next step to grow my business or authority. You know, the root word of authority is author. You can't spell the word authority without the word author. So for some people, that's the play, right? For some people, it's impact. Hey, I want my kids, my grandkids to have a book about my life that they can read so that long after I'm off this earth, it's still here, right? And they, they can learn from me. And then I think the big one though is I have this concept called leveraged impact. Right. And so I think that's what a book is, is, is leveraged impact. You do this work once, this hard yeah. work, which Jenny, you know how hard it was yes. going through that process. And, but then this book is, exists and that book can go on to impact thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even millions of people. Yes. And, and so I think, you know, if you want to go from one to one to one to many and bring leverage to the impact that you're trying to make, well, also, I, I truly believe it's one of the best things that you can ever do to grow your business. Like those two things combined, I think, are the main reasons that most people in your audience, I think, should write a book. Yeah, I love that. You know, it was funny because I swore up and down for years on the record that I would never write a book. And my why got so deep and it felt so important and it felt so worth the time and the work. And it's so crazy too, because anyone that has written a book or anyone that plans to write a book, I want you to know, it feels like the most important work you have ever done. And that's why authors are so obsessed with their books, because it's like, you're so intentional about what goes into those pages, because once it hits the press or once you start printing it, (laughs) there's no going back, right? Like it feels so much more eternal in a beautiful way. And I think that challenges you to create from a very different place than the world that we live in where you can edit or Mm. delete or backspace. And I feel like that permanence makes it feel so like palpable and like, I don't know, important. And I love it. I agree. It's, it's, I think it's one of the most challenging things is you're crystallizing what you actually believe on a thing. Yeah. (laughs) Because you're typing it and you're like, all right, this is going to go into print. Yes. (laughs) Yeah. And I've never been forced to like really pin down what do I believe here? Yeah. And so that can be really beneficial as, as you know, self-reflection and, and kind of almost like free therapy in yeah. the process. But it also, what's really interesting, and I don't know if you found this with your book, Jenna, is it forces you to crystallize frameworks, which you might be better at this than I am. But I feel like a lot of times I'll have all these ideas just spinning and they're not really buttoned up in like a framework that you could put on a napkin and hand to someone. But when I write my books, I realize that it's just like, okay... I'm sifting (laughs) and then now all right, I have a framework that I can share and then that will become the frameworks that I'll use in courses and trainings and coaching and a bunch of other stuff. Yeah, I love that. You know, Chandler, there are probably people listening right now and they're in one of two camps. I feel like anyone that has considered or has even thought about writing a book, they're in one of these two camps. They either have too many ideas, like they have ideas coming out of their ears (laughs) <laughs> or they are wondering, like, is this one idea enough to write a book on? Can you talk a little bit about a strategy for picking and fleshing out a topic and like mm. kind of having that like cornerstone of like, this is what my book is about? Yeah, this is a great question. So I'll break this kind of into two parts. Part number one is if you're still getting clear on your idea or coming up with an idea. Part two is if you've got too many ideas and you're trying to figure out which book to write first. So If you're still getting clear on your idea, I recommend, I call it the idea finder. I talk about this in my new book, Published. It's So it's really just three questions to ask to come up with an idea. So the most common question for most people is, hey, what do you get paid for? Or what's your area of expertise or job? Right? You've got a lot of experience, years, maybe even decades of experience in that thing. 
And if I were to try to do that today, there would be this huge gap between what I know on day one and what you know and what you've learned the hard way. And in that gap, for most people, is a really great book. So there's that. There's what do people come to you for advice on? What's the thing that people have said, hey, you should write a book on that? Or, you know, for business owners, what's the broken record conversations that you keep having over and over and over again in your business? (laughs) Yeah. And the best way to stop talking about it is just just write a book on that thing and then point to that book. Yeah. And and again, leverage, you can answer those questions at scale. And so that's the coming up with the idea piece. But then if you're like a a lot of creatives, it's like, man, I've got so many ideas. How do I figure out which, which book to write? Well, we only have two rules when we're working with people. Rule number one, this is so important. Do not edit while you write. (laughs) Yes. Yes. You know, it's, we, we all know someone who has five perfectly written chapters in their unfinished book. Yes. <laughs> and they yes. just keep editing those five chapters, right? So don't do that. And then second piece, and I think you're spot on with this, Jenna, is you can't write more than one book at a time. If you've got too many ideas, you got to narrow in on one. And that's where I recommend people ask three questions. So question number one, which one could I get a rough draft done the fastest? Okay, so I've got the most content. I've got the most life experience. Number two, which one am I most likely to finish? So not only am I going to get started, but I'm going to, you know, I'm going to actually take this to the finish line. And then number three is which one's going to make me happy? Mm. Am I going to enjoy the process? Yes. Uh, And and so those are kind of the three questions that I ask and I recommend people ask if they've got too many ideas to narrow in. Oh, that is so good. And, you know, it's wild too, because books kind of take on a life of their own. And I love what you said about not editing while you're writing, because I know so many people that get hung up on like having that like perfect preview chapter or things like that. And like you said, they never finish the actual book because they're stuck on that one spot. I think that is such amazing advice. Okay. So let's talk about this. I was just thinking about how for many people, writing a book can take years, right? Like you hear about that all the time. Like I worked on this book for a decade. Writing a book is a massive undertaking. There's no denying that. But can someone write a good book in a short amount of time? Like kind of give me the time frame. You have watched thousands of books get published. So talk to me about that. Yeah, I think it can be done a lot faster than people think. And, yeah. you know, I don't want people to hear me wrong here. Is You know, fast doesn't mean bad. Yeah. And fast doesn't mean skip, you know, you rush through the process, right? Yep. It's, I mean, the reality is, and, and, and you know this, you've seen this with friends of ours, Jenna, in the industry, is if you do a traditional publishing deal or a publishing deal, either way, the book is going to be likely written in a three-month span. Yep. It's either yes. Yes, on your truly. own or right before your publisher's deadline. <laughs> truly, truly. <laughs> and so even if you have a traditional publishing deal, most of those books get written in the final, you know, two, three months before the deadline. So I'm a fan of just using Parkinson's law in your favor. And so for, you know, people, you know, you can get a rough draft done in as little as a weekend, which is like a crazy example. Or, you know, maybe you want to take a a 30 day, we call it a 30 day rough draft challenge. And so say, hey, I'm going to have two 30 minute writing sessions every day for 30 days straight. Well, if you write a thousand words a day in that process, well, you've got 30,000 words, which is you know, that's, that's just on the short end of a book, but you know, a, a traditionally published or, you know, kind of normal book is about 40 to 70,000 words. So yeah. you've written most of a book, but what I recommend for people that will help make the process easier is I call this the more writing method, more as an acronym. So M stands for mind map. So it's just brainstorming all the ideas on the topic of the book, yeah. right? Then you use that mind map to create an outline. All right. So you'll kind of on that mind map, you know, you got all these ideas. You start to group them into groups or sections, order those sections in the order that you want to cover them in the book and then drill down maybe about three chapters per section. Well, now you've got let's call it five sections, three chapters a piece. You got a 15 chapter outline. That's that's a full length book. And then then you move into the R stands for rough draft. So you write the book one chapter at a time. And that's really where this the, the mind map outline right. And you just keep repeating that process kind of on a micro level per chapter. And then for a lot of people, you know, I don't know if you're this way, Jenna, but, you know, a lot of people speak better than they write. Mm -hmm. So then you mind map and outline the chapter and then speak the chapter. And then you get that transcribed. And now you've got kind of a starting point. So rather than 
staring at the dreaded blank page <laughs> <laughs> and that cursor is just taunting you, the blanking cursor, <laughs> that can shortcut the process for a lot of people. And then just not to leave people hanging, the E stands for editing. So that's the more writing method. And that's how people can get their rough draft done a lot faster. I love that. And I actually agree on that timeline in the sense of like, I started my book. I did not have a publishing deal. I did not have an agent. I had nothing except for a desire to write. And I started it at the end of August and I finished my first draft December 31st. So I gave myself a deadline of the end of the year. And so (laughs) it was about that three month time frame. Mm. And for me also, I had a lot of motivation because I knew that I was hopeful to get pregnant. And I knew that when I'm pregnant, my brain does not work. And Mm. so I was like, I got to get these words out before my hormone shift and everything starts to happen. And so that was a great deadline. And that E part of your acronym, the editing process, like, I want people to know that like, the first draft sucks. And that's Mm. okay. And I think that it's so beautiful and empowering to even have like an initial draft where you're like, Hey, this could be a book. Like that felt so cool. Like I didn't go through any of the traditional process until I had an entire manuscript done. And so I loved that because like you said, you know, whether you have a deal or you self publish three months is kind of like, I mean, it's a great amount of time to really get something done. And Let me tell you, Chandler, we actually greatly debated whether to traditionally publish or self-publish. Can you share a little bit about the differences and which option might be better for people? Mm, Yeah, that's that's a great question. I'd love to hear kind of your perspective after that. um, Yeah. You know, I think so there's a few main differences. Now, it used to be that the only way to sell books was to get into bookstores. The only way to get into bookstores was to be traditionally published. You had to have an agent. Like there's all these kind of gatekeepers and steps in the process. But now it's crazy stat, but 70% of all books sold are sold on Amazon and other online retailers. And you don't need a publisher to publish in those retailers, right? So distribution, it used to be a factor is now no longer a factor. And that's really one of the big reasons why self-publishing has kind of transitioned from the backup plan. <laughs> it was like the thing that you, know, you did if you couldn't get a publishing deal to now for a lot of authors, it's the preferred option. But really there's kind of two or three other main differences. So there's royalty rate, you know, and if you're traditionally published, you'll probably make somewhere between eight to 12%. So maybe a dollar a book. If you're self published, yep. anywhere from 20 to 70%. So you keep a lot more of the money when you self publish. The process is typically faster and you have more autonomy over it when you self publish. And so that, like, how long does it take to go through the process? So those are the main differences kind of for people to consider. Obviously, there's the cost if you're traditionally yep. publishing. They're covering the cost for you and kind of coordinating. If you're self-publishing, you have to do it yourself. So I'd say for 99.9% of people, it makes more sense to self-publish. The only times that it does make sense to traditionally publish is sometimes in situations like yours, where if you've got a massive audience and you've got a publisher that's willing to give a big advance, then that's the times where I say, hey, you should seriously consider this. And still weigh out the pros and cons. And you might do some yeah. things like you might negotiate out your audiobook rights, or you might negotiate out or things so that you don't lose control of the content. But those are kind of the pros and cons. Yeah, I love that. You know, we went back and forth for a bit. And for me, what it ultimately came down to is like, I wanted the right guidance through the whole process and to experience the traditional route because it was offered to me. So once I felt like, oh, wow, I can get a deal and I can work with a great publishing house and I really loved my editor and I loved my agent... But, you know, there are some down plays to the traditional route. It takes a lot longer, like the lead times, like there was points in the process where I was like, I just want to get it out into the world. Like, I remember when we were picking the date of the release and I was like, that feels like forever away. And I was like, so excited about the book and I just (laughs) wanted to get it out there. Yeah. And like you said, too, it's like kind of the difference of like, you can either get money on the front end if you Mm -hmm. have that audience and that following, or if you self-publish, you're almost more motivated in that sense because you get that money on the back end. So the more you sell, the more you make. And that's That's not always the case with traditional. So Mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's interesting because I look at a lot of people in my audience who ask that question of like, where do I go and get an agent? What does this look like? And it's like, for most people, 
I believe that self-publishing would be the route. And I know a lot of peers, even in my industry, who have done the traditional route. They kind of get the lay of the land. They've been through it. They kind of see the support that the publisher can offer. And then they kind of weigh out, should I self-publish this next route? And a lot of people that I know have gone on to then self-publish their second, third, fourth book because Mm -hmm. they can utilize it in their business in a more strategic way because they have more control over it. And they're able to kind of build it into their businesses. Mm, that's good. That's yeah, that's a really great perspective. And hey, and by the way, side note, um, yeah, I've got your book pulled up on Amazon. Congrats on passing a thousand reviews. I Ooh, know wow. it was a goal of mine to hit last year. And my audience was incredible at the beginning of this year. I was like, hey, I missed this goal. So many of you send me DMs with reviews. And so that was really awesome. And you know, I was really proud too. Like we kicked off this year being in the top 1000 of books six months after pub date, which was like, so awesome. It just felt really cool. That is great. That's, that's more important than launch week. In my opinion, that's something that I think a lot of people get twisted. I I call it, it's just like the Lamborghini launch versus the Toyota Camry approach. Yes. (laughs) Is what I call it. Longevity, (laughs) baby. You know, the Lamborghinis are fast and sexy, but gone in a flash and they use up a ton of fuel. (laughs) That's how most people look at their launch week, right? It's, it's all systems go, but I love, the Toyota Camry books, <laughs> mm-hmm. they just keep chugging and selling. So that's a huge accomplishment. I mean, I think, you know, looking at your book or any author's book, how it's selling six months later is way more yeah. important than how it sells on launch week. Now, yeah. sure, one will correlate into the other oftentimes, but not always. I love that. My team and I absolutely hit the ground running in 2023. And I feel like we're going along at a pretty good clip to start off the new year. One thing that is so important to me as a business owner and a leader of this small but mighty team is getting aligned on our shared mission and goals for the year. If you're the same way, HubSpot is a fantastic tool. With HubSpot CRM, you can keep your marketing, sales, operations, and service teams in sync on one powerful platform that grows with your business. Capture leads, boost sales, and engage customers all from one powerful platform. Tools like a unified contact record, help desk automation, and customizable reporting make it easy to unite your team around a single source of truth, which means you can spend less time managing your software and more time connecting with your customers. Learn how HubSpot can help your business grow better in 2023 and get a special offer of 20% off on eligible plans at HubSpot dot com slash gold digger. With one little shift, my life began to feel longer, more expansive. I know it sounds dramatic, but it all started when I questioned something that I had claimed about myself for years. I had said journaling isn't for me. I would look at my graveyard of unfinished journals and feel like a failure. My intentions, they had been good, but I simply didn't enjoy the experience of journaling. But then something clicked. I created a five-minute daily practice and my daily reflection journal was born. Now I want you to experience the life-changing habit too. Grab your daily reflection journal by going to howareyoureallyjournal.com or you can send me a DM on Instagram with the word reflect and I'll send you all the info on how to get your hands on a copy. It's a one page per day journal that gives you enough space to open your mind, respond to the open prompts and reflect on your day. There is so much magic in a five minute daily check in. Start your new journaling journey with me and get your daily reflection journal plus a free journaling masterclass to help you get started on your journaling path when you do. You can grab this at howareyoureallyjournal.com or hop onto Insta and shoot me a DM with the word reflect. I want to know, so if somebody's listening to this and they're like, okay, I really want to write a book. You guys are totally selling me on this crazy idea, but how do I find an audience that will actually buy and read it? What elements do you recommend as say a part of a launch strategy? Since we're talking about launches, like how do we get the book in front of the people that we want to read it? Mm, Such a great question. I would go kind of two parts here. Like first part is, the marketing starts before the marketing starts. Yes. Yes. <laughs> right. As you've seen. And I think you did an awesome job at this, Jenna. It was so cool just seeing the social post kind of over the months leading up to the book and celebrating milestones and all that stuff. It feels like, I mean, I think it's one of your superpowers. It's just people feel involved in the process and then yeah. they care about the thing. Yeah. Right. So I feel yeah. like people felt involved in, in 
the creation of your book, which is super smart. And so like the first thing that I recommend is getting clear on the four P's of a best-selling book for your book. And so the four P's are person, pain, promise, and price. So who is the person? And what I recommend is, is actually one person that you know. <laughs> this is not an avatar. This is not a, you know, an ideal reader or any of that stuff. It's, it's all right, one person that you know. Then write the book to that one person. You end up writing a better book. And when you go to market it, well, you just think, okay, let's say that my, my one person is Jenna. It's like, okay, well, what podcast does Jenna listen to? What sites does Jenna go on? Like all the things that I need to know when I think about marketing, I would just ask that question, right? So there's the person, there's the pain. And so what's the pain that this person has that they know that they have that I'm addressing with this book? What's the promise? That's the third P that I'm making with the book. And then the price is pretty self-explanatory with you know, with books, but so getting super clear on that, like that's the marketing that starts before the marketing that starts. And then when it comes to launch and, and I know you did this really well, but I've got, I call it a launch triangle. And so the launch triangle, it's, it's three things. It's forming a launch team. It's getting reviews and it's doing promotions. And the first two kind of go hand in hand. And then the third piece, the promotions there's what I call the MVP launch. So kind of the, the minimum viable product launch, or you've got your traditional launch. And that really is just an accordion based on your time, money, and resources that you want to put behind this book. So the promotions can really, I mean, that's a wide range, but all that to say that the launch team and reviews are the most important thing, even if you don't have an audience. And so that was where I was with my first book. I had no audience, but the launch team really helped just kind of propel the book and I think you did a launch team and you did a couple Mm -hmm. things that I think were super smart. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I love how you're explaining this. And I think too, something that's so awesome is when you think about writing a book or even think about like your last book Chandler published, like people can search for different keywords and your book will populate. Like, so Mm. it can be people even outside of your ecosystem that are looking for something on the topic. And so I think there are so many different ways that you can look at this where it's like, when you write a book, you get to hit those strategic people that you're planning on meeting. But the ripple effect of a book is so much wider. Like I get messages every day of people that have read my book that had zero clue who I was, didn't mm. follow me online. And I think that it, it starts that relationship at such a deeper level. And like you said at the very beginning, with that authority that is required to really turn people from like a passive follower to a raving fan. And I love that. That's great. That's great. I completely agree. Okay. So let's talk about how a book can either help grow somebody's business or how a book can almost become a business in and of itself. Talk to me about how your students have used books to support their current efforts, whether they're already in business or they're launching a business. Mm. Yeah, it's a great question. So I look at how can you use a book to grow your business in three ways. And so this is kind of, you know, dovetailing off of what you just talked about, which is, you know, getting more sales, more leads, more referrals. Now, this is whether you have an existing business. For me, I used a book to launch my my business. So to launch self-publishing school. So I'll kind of break down those three buckets. So bucket number one, leads. These are people who hear about you because of the book. Right. So that's exactly what you just said. And you've seen with your book is people who have never heard of you. They never listened to podcasts and anything. And they see the book and now they're in your ecosystem. Right. Then there's more sales. So this is people who already know about you, who decide to do business with you because of the book. Right. And so this might be people who are listening to the podcast or following you on Instagram for years. And then the book was the first thing that they paid for. And as we know, people who pay, pay attention. Right. And so now all of a sudden I'm, I'm a customer and I'm taking the relationship kind of a step further. And then the third piece is more referrals. And so, you know, a book is the ultimate thing to get people to refer you business because <laughs> no one's going to go around saying, Hey, you should work with Chandler and self publishing school. But if they hear that someone's writing a book, they say, Oh, you should check out Chandler's book published. Right. It's just a simple way to, to refer business. One thing that we do that I recommend people do as well. Well, there's two things. Number one is, Give two copies of your book to every new customer or prospect. And you say, hey, here's one for you. And here's one for a friend, you know, who needs help with this thing, right? That your book's about. And so that, and then we make it super easy for people to refer us business because we have a 
a page on our website where people can, they can send a free book to a friend and we cover the cost of everything. We ship them a book, but now all of a sudden they know that, Hey, if I find out someone's writing a book, I can just send them a book. We'll say, Hey, it's on their behalf. We're sending them a book. And then if they sign up for self-publishing school, that person will get like a, a referral and fee. And then also the person who signs up will get a discount on joining the program. So it's, I mean, this is not revolutionary. This is like an Uber Eats code. You know, it's like, hey, I'll send you my code. You get 30 bucks. I get 30 bucks. But, yeah. it, but it's also in a way where you're making it easy to refer because the yeah. person is adding value by sharing the book. So yeah. that's where, you know, a lot of people say a book is the new business card. I think it's better than a business card because people don't throw it away, <laughs> but yeah. they do throw away business cards. That's so cool. I love that. And again, one more point for self-publishing that you can do things like that because you wouldn't really be able to do that with a traditionally published book because the margins are very mm. different. Yeah. You got to buy them at cost from the publisher, which makes it a little bit more cost prohibitive. Yeah. Why should this be the year that somebody writes their book? Like if someone is on the fence or they're like, mm, I wrote it down as a resolution, but I haven't even really started. <laughs> Give it to me. Oh my gosh. We hear this all the time. This is like the biggest excuse is either, hey, I don't have time. I'm busy, yeah. Chandler. <laughs> like, you don't know how busy my life is or the timing isn't right. So kind of like you just asked is, okay, hey, I know that I want to do it, but, you know, maybe someday, maybe next year. And yeah. my encouragement and really challenge for people would be that, you know, maybe someday becomes maybe never for most people. Yeah. And yeah. it sounds cliche, but we're just not promised tomorrow. And if you want this to be something that's part of your legacy, that long after you're off this earth is still here, well, then write it today. Or, I mean, if you truly believe that this is one of the best things that you can do to grow your brand, your influence, your business, well, then there's no point in waiting. Like, there, it's going to be a short term sacrifice. <laughs> you're going to have to get started before you're ready. It's never just going to happen. And I think maybe you saw this experience kind of firsthand, Jenna, is like, hey, I'm not doing a book. I'm not doing a book. I'm not doing a book. Oh, hold up. I need to do a book and I'm doing it now. Yeah, <laughs> Like I'm not yes. going to wait. Yes. Uh, and so, yeah, that'd be my encouragement. You know, I want to encourage people too. Like, I don't think people know this, but my book was written like during my children's nap times after they went to bed. My business was still the same business. So I added on the book writing process, but it wasn't brutal. It was so fun. I remember so many times I have this amazing leather chair that is so old <laughs> and so worn in and perfect. And I would sit in our living room while Drew would cook dinner and I would just start writing. And my book was written in these like 30 minute segments. And I think a lot of times people picture like, I need to go rent a cabin in the woods and lock <laughs> myself away for a month and write this novel. And it's like, Man, like if you just committed, like you said, that 30 minutes, two times a day for 30 days, oh my gosh, like you could make such progress and like have something that you could tangibly hold in your hands. And that's something that I didn't expect to feel so different after being in the digital space for over a decade, having this product that I can literally hold in my hands, that I can hand off to a stranger, that I can sign in an airport, like having that tangible piece of like, this is the work that I do. It totally is so transformative in so many ways. Mm -hmm. And I am just like, I want everyone to write a book. It's like, you know, and Oprah's like, and you get a car, <laughs> you get a car. I'm like, and you write your book and you write your book because I feel like having a book is like this proclamation of either like, here's what I know and here's what's important or like, here's what I've learned and here's what I want to teach. And mm -hmm. I just feel like there is something so beautiful and so powerful about that. It feels like such a legacy play and a life that is so fixated on things that live and die on social media so quickly. It's like this legacy mm -hmm. play that I feel like cannot be replicated through other means. Yeah, I completely agree. And I, I don't know if you felt this, Jenna, but that first time that you get the physical book in, oh in my the gosh. mail... I mean, yeah. it's a magical moment. It's like, I created this. And in a world of digital creations, like we both kind of live in this world, it can feel fickle. Like, all right, yeah. if you know, the wrong button gets pushed or the wrong server gets deleted, this is gone. gone. Right, right. <laughs> but this book is going to be, you know, long after I'm off this earth, you know, I might be at a Goodwill, <laughs> but it's going to be here. And yeah. it's just a magical feeling. It really is. 
So you are leading a training on how to write and publish a book. So talk to me a little bit about what you're going to be sharing inside of that training. Give us a little tidbit so that we can get all excited about what you're going to be teaching. Yeah. So I'm really excited to be kind of just teaching with, with your crew. They're awesome. And I'm super excited for this. So thanks for bringing me in. So uh, we'll be talking about three things. So and really taking a next step on some of the things that we unpacked here. So number one, self-publishing versus traditional publishing. Go a little bit deeper. Which one should you choose? Number two, and this is probably the most important piece, you will leave this training with progress on your book. So you will actually have physical, tangible progress on the book. We'll walk through kind of some of the writing process. And then thirdly, we're going to go and do a deep dive on marketing. So how do you launch this book successfully? And how do you use it to grow your impact or your business? And then we've got some freebies and stuff when you register as well that you'll get. Amazing. And all you have to do is just DM me the word author, A-U-T-H-O-R. DM me the word author. I will send you the link to Chandler's training. We also have the link linked up in today's show notes and show description so that you can attend the training. I am so excited. And Chandler, I just want to say like, I absolutely love what you do and how you do it. And the fact that you have helped thousands of people get a book out into the world, like you are like the godfather of books. I just (laughs) think it is amazing. And I want my audience to get their books out into the world because there are so many people listening to this that have these incredible gifts or they have learned these valuable lessons, or they have these stories that are dying to be told. And I think you are the person to help them usher these books into the world like a true godfather. Mm, I appreciate that, Jenna. And the feeling is mutual. Like when you came in and spoke at our conference, like people loved you, loved your story, your relatability, all sharing about your book launch and everything. So yeah, the feeling is mutual. I appreciate you. Where can everybody find you and connect with you and learn more about you as a person and also get your books? Give me all the places. Yeah. You can find me on Facebook. I'm kind of old school. That's the only place I'm at. Uh, I'm not a big uh, social media guy. But then you can also check out the book on Amazon. If you listen to this podcast, you probably like audio content. So I narrated the audio book. We can continue the conversation there on Audible or wherever you listen to books. And then last thing um, I'd love to do is just, I want to give away some free physical copies to this audience. So if you want a physical copy of the book, I will literally print it, pack it. Well, I won't pack it, but I will have it printed and packed and shipped and everything. And we'll cover all the costs. So all you have to do is go to publishedbook.com forward slash Jenna. So published, like I published a book.com forward slash Jenna. And we'll give away a bunch of free copies and actual physical copies, no strings attached, no shipping and handling, none of that. So Hopefully it'll help you out on your book journey. Awesome. Thank you, Chandler. And I cannot wait to read everybody's books. I cannot wait for people to DM me and say, I'm going to write a book because those words changed my life. And I cannot wait to have the same happen for everyone listening. I can honestly say that writing my book is probably my proudest piece of work in over a decade of showing up. And I also really loved the process of writing my book and getting it out into the world because I met people like Chandler. And I remember when Chandler reached out to me and told me about how he helps authors bring their books to life. And I just absolutely loved what he did and how he did it. I sincerely hope that if writing a book is something that you're curious about or you want to do please, please, please attend Chandler's free training. It is gold and it will help you literally get started today. Reminder, all you have to do is just DM me the word author. Jump over to Instagram, find me at Jenna Kutcher, send me a DM with the word author and I will send you all the information that you need to sign up. We also have the sign up page linked in today's show notes, but I cannot tell you enough how thankful I am that I went back on my word and did the thing that I said I was never going to do. And I wrote my book because it has absolutely changed my life and my business forever. And all I want is the same for you. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Until next time, keep on digging your biggest goals. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. 
And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com. 